and those people that were getting a little late in joining uh, be able to catch up if they miss anything. So I'd like to start off by thanking everyone for joining us uh, on a demonstration of the Bobadoo software uh, with a focus on uh, ping post capabilities. Uh, so for those of you that have attended demo, there's going to be some redundancy here as that will cover some of the main aspects of the system, um, but we will focus in terms of buying and selling leads on a ping post basis here. Uh, so I'm also going to put everybody on mute. Um, if you have questions throughout the demo or at the end, please feel free to just uh, instant message them across. We have uh, Tyler here from our office that will be collecting them so we can answer them at the end of the day. Right. So for our agenda today, uh, we're going to start by discussing the marketing activity that you can bring to your Bobadoo system. Uh, then we'll cover uh, lead sellers, vendors, and sources. Uh, then we will talk about in your system. Uh, finally, we'll take a look at the leads tab, uh, reporting, and some other uh, bells and whistles uh, that you can use to uh, maximize the revenue of each lead that you generate. So if we jump over to the Must What, which is our internal testing and demo system, uh, first thing you'll notice is that the Cost What logo on the upper left hand side uh, that will be replaced with your company's logo, and we are at an admin login. Uh, the system is pricing is based off of your average incoming daily leads. Uh, so you have unlimited logins for lead sellers, for lead buyers, for sales reps, and then varying levels of permissions that you can create for administrators uh, to display only that relevant information to the appropriate party. So when we log into the Bobberdoo system here, you'll see uh, a typical dashboard uh, taking you through a high level view of the activity in your system by lead type. Um, you can customize those as well as other aspects of the system like the theme uh, through this top uh, navigation menu. So you can reorganize and change which metrics are pulled in this dashboard, change the color scheme, uh, manage your own internal calendar, and then our tickets, uh, which is both a way for you to communicate with other team members in your organization as well as submit support and uh, custom projects to Bobberdoo. So back to the uh, the agenda, the first thing that we'll be talking about is, uh, you know, what marketing activity are you bringing into the system? Uh, so that brings us to the lead types uh, page. So the lead types are a set of fields uh, that a lead would submit um, to be contacted for a particular service or product. Uh, so in here you can see we have a long list of different types of leads. Uh, one of the important things is that we build your uh, lead type to your specifications. So you tell us what fields you want to be optional, what fields to be required, and what fields you want to make a business decision on. Um, some fields, some verticals are, are pretty standardized, like in auto insurance or auto finance. Um, and then others will vary greatly uh, amongst our clients, uh, like a refi mortgage lead type, for example. Um, so we're going to be using these top three lead types. We have just a plain demo lead type uh, that's just generic. Um, much like routing and billing for web leads, uh, you can also uh, grab an 800 number through your Bobadoo system market that number and drive either raw calls, click to calls or live transfers uh, through your Bobberdoo system and deliver those calls to uh, a lead buyer as well. Uh, so for those of you that are interested in that, we did focus on that on Wednesday's demo and I can send you a recording of that aspect uh, if you're interested. And then finally, we have a generic insurance lead type that um, we created for the purposes of this, uh, this demo. So. For those of you in auto insurance, you'll notice there's probably 300 feet. We obviously stripped this down to make it very basic for demo purposes. But in here, you will see uh, the posting specifications for uh, a lead seller or your, from, for example, if you already have one that's going to direct post the lead uh, via get or post into your Bobberdoo system. So this is where you're going to have your optional, your required uh, fields, and then if we come down here and take a look at age and insurance type, 
steps required um, and will allow us to build business rules to say an 18 to 34 year old is ten dollars and a 34 to 55 year old is twelve dollars and so on <clears throat> so the other thing on these uh, initial posting specs is that with every lead that is submitted into the system uh, receives a response and that's very important especially when you're dealing with third-party sellers because uh, this allows them to record the response and reduce any discrepancies that may occur uh, when sellers and buyers are dealing with each other. <clears throat> so again, this is the pardon me, the uh, the direct post uh, into the system. Um, we're going to go ahead and take a look at uh, the other aspect, which would be a, a lead seller that is pinging leads into your system. Um, so that is done through our API section. So a little aside on this, there are about 50 standard APIs that come with your system, but we can also custom ones uh, based off your needs. And if we look at this ping post lead API, it's going to load all of the lead types in your system that have ping post capabilities. So you can see we have quite a few in there. If we click on the insurance lead type, you'll see it looks very similar to, uh, to the previous posting specs with the addition of the ping required. Uh, column. So <clears throat> you can build your own URL, this along with some defining variables to a lead seller, and allow them to build that ping uh, post into your system. And again, down here you'll see uh, examples, and then when you get into non-exclusive leads, uh, we have the ability to pass hashes back and forth so that uh, you can uh, share matching partner information, it can be encrypted, uh, so there's a lot of flexibility in being with two aggregators or wholesalers working together. So that's uh, defining what uh, you are bringing into your system, and now we can look at how. So you have your direct posting through a getter or post, you have the API spec for a ping, uh, but you can also build a, a form off of the lead type uh, and then quickly put this on a landing page and, uh, and market that uh, however you'd like as well. So in the forms manager here, you'll see uh, several different forms we've already had set up. Um, I'll cover that at a fairly high level here just to give you an idea of the capabilities. So uh, the idea again is that you can control all of the back end actions regarding the form and then push leeches that you make to any uh, website that has this code that I've highlighted. So things like uh, you can do custom CSS styles, you can do uh, mobile optimization uh, if you don't have a responsive design form, uh, and then you can control the confirmation page. So you can display specific text, you can redirect the iframe or the user into another window, which is opportunity for cross offers um, and upsell opportunities. You can also do things like <clears throat> uh, change the submit button and then in agree to terms uh, for TCPA compliance or any other things that you would want to uh, delete to agree to. Uh, also in the form you can change the field configuration uh, so you can set defaults, you can hide fields, and then you can change the layout um, through the uh, through this option here. So you can do toggle lines, you can do horizontal sections, you can add page splits. Uh, all of that, when saved, is pushed to the URL through that website code. So you don't have to maintain a website developer, uh, but you can uh, you know, set. We have clients that will set up two or three templates. There's also a WordPress plugin, so you can utilize that to rapidly produce new landing pages. So along those same lines, uh, and, and dealing with third-party affiliates and lead sellers um, on a direct basis or driving traffic to your landing page, we have web campaigns. So web campaigns are just like creating an offer in a typical affiliate network. It's going to allow you to uh, create the uh, create the, uh, the assets that surround an offer, and then push those to your vendor logins so that they can uh, uh, generate a click URL and, uh, and then run traffic to your landing page. 
So if we just take a quick look inside one here, you'll see here there's four different types of campaigns. So this is in beta. We're going to release this here shortly or get a review of it. So unlike other vertical, um, other offers where you're firing a pixel, um, here you have a little bit more flexibility on when you fire that pixel. Uh, so you can do it on all leads. Uh, you can do it only on sold leads. Uh, you can do revenue shares, uh, and then you can uh, utilize the bucket. So the bucket allows you to determine a revenue that needs to be generated to fire one pixel. So maybe uh, the $20 bucket gets fired upon $25 worth of sales. <coughs> and so each time a bucket is filled up, it fires one pixel. Uh, you can then again push this information to your logins along with things like your opt-out information, uh, your creatives, uh, and then uh, you can then place the pixels on a source-by-source -source basis. So a source is a tracking variable uh, that is very important to the system that we'll cover here in a second. So those are going to define the main methods to get leads into the system. And now we'll talk about tracking and segmenting those leads. Who is sending you the leads? Where are they coming from? So that is done through a vendor source organization. So a vendor is going to be a third party lead seller, it might be an affiliate network, uh, it might be an outsourced uh, paid search uh, marketing company. <coughs> so you can come in here and we'll go into uh, to one uh, vendor just to, to poke around a little bit. So in addition to their contact information, you'll notice their API key, which would be used if they're pinging leads into your system. Uh, you can push suppression files to them in plain text or MD5. Uh, you can also do rev sharing percentages and then customize the permissions on what they're able to see through this option here. So there's various reports that are available uh, and then different pages. So you can allow them to see their leads, for example, or push a host and post manager to them. Or in the case of uh, the web campaigns, you can enable that so they have the ability to view those assets. So the next level of organization that we talk about here is the source settings. So for the source settings, you'll notice I'm going to click over to the insurance lead type. And so source is important very because it not only tells you where the lead came from, but it also tells the system what actions to take when a lead comes in from a particular source. So you can see some high level things like the timeouts, uh, cost, lead QC check, partners per lead that you can set an overall um, at an overall level. And if we click into the update source, you'll see there are about 30 different switches. So these represent uh, a lot of flexibility in dealing with uh, a particular lead seller. So if they require a certain response um, or other options, we can uh, typically there's a switch already built into the system for you to activate it. Um, this is going to bring us to kind of the first point at which ping post veers off from uh, your standard real-time delivery, and that would be in the source settings. So you'll notice here that this is called lead system dynamic. So the idea with the source is they're going to ping a lead in uh, partial information. We are going to then compile a bid uh, based off of our buyers and then pass the balance to uh, this seller as your represented bid. Um, so all of that bid is going to be calculated based on these settings. So for example, you can then assign a source to a particular vendor for tracking purposes. Uh, we have a lead QC check, which is uh, an optional add-on that will score the data points of the lead and hold those that fail for manual review. And so in a ping post basis, this is beneficial because you're getting ping, let's say zip code and credit or something along that lines. Um, and then you win the bid, and then you get the entire details posted, but the phone number comes over as 555-1212. So in this case, the lead, uh, and so we would send them back an error response to the lead seller so that you would not be responsible to purchase that lead. Uh, you'll notice that zero is uh, the price for the lead cost, and the reason is is because we're not paying a flat fee per lead, but rather we're going to bid per ping. Um, the other big variable is the partners per lead. So as I had mentioned with the hashes, 
Uh, you can deliver leads non-exclusively. We can do something called scenarios in a ping post environment, which would allow you to then calculate uh, the best combination of uh, partners to send that to, be it one exclusive or uh, uh, some of other non-exclusive buyers. And they'll compare those two and sell it to whichever one is gonna make you the most money. Uh, you have delivery timeouts, both on the ping and post. Uh, so this is very important, something I know a lot of other systems have encountered, is that you can, your source will, or, or lead seller would typically tell you, um, I'm gonna give you so many seconds to process the ping. Maybe it's 15 seconds, and then I'm gonna give you 30 seconds to process the post. Um, by setting these, uh, these options on the source level here, you'll ensure that you'll always get a response back to them. So even if you have a buyer who has a lagging system and is not able to dynamically reply to, uh, to your ping with a bid, we just would not include them. So you're always going to get a bid back to the lead seller. And so that is very important for lead sellers so that they can process those leads, minimize the time any leads might be on an interstitial page and, uh, and make the overall process more efficient. But the big one is this option that I have highlighted here, which is return best price parameter. So by selecting either yes or yes, but sold non-exclusively, this tells the system to ping the lead out, gather the bid, carve out a profit margin, and pass the balance back to this seller as your represented bid. Uh, the difference between yes and yes, but sold non-exclusively uh, really goes to your business process. So in yes, uh, it is a one-to-one -one basis, meaning you calculate the best bid of, the, uh, of your buyers, and then you pass that bid to your, to your seller. Now on that post, if that single client that returned the best bid that rejects the post, we then send a reject back to the buyer, uh, to the seller. But in the case of yes, but sold non-exclusively, if that first, the highest bidder will rejects the lead, on the post, we will then attempt to deliver it to the next available buyer as long as the uh, price that they are paying is greater than the cost. So we'll ignore profit margin uh, as long as it's positive. Some other uh, tools and, and tra or tips for uh, ping post, we have max best price offer. So this is gonna allow you to set a ceiling. Um, so I encourage all of our new clients to go in there and set something fairly high, uh, just in case there's a typo in your system. Maybe you put a lead buyer in to purchase leads at $1,000 and carving out a 10% profit margin, you wouldn't want to pass $900 back as your bid. So this is going to cap and protect you from doing that. And then there's vendor premium margin. So previously to this, uh, previous to this, uh, this switch here, our clients had to make a decision on whether they wanted to calculate profit based off of who the lead seller was or based off of who the lead buyer is. Um, so this vendor premium margin allows our clients to, uh, to work both sides of the coin, so to speak. So the main profit margin sits in the filter set side on the lead buyer. We'll cover that later on. Um, but you can then either <coughs> add money. Uh, so let's just say in the case here, a $1 premium. <coughs> is going to allow us to add $1 back and increase your bid only on leads coming from this particular seller. Uh, this also works in a negative fashion, meaning you can set negative $1 and take out one additional dollar of profit uh, from this lead seller. So this keeps your filter sets nice and tight and it also allows you to reward high quality or high volume lead sellers um, without having to create unique filter sets for each buyer. Some other options here, uh, ignore profit margin. Uh, you can delete unmatched leads, which is something that some clients will make you do. Uh, and then we have send back leads. So you can choose whether to send back a lead if it's declined and or refunded. Um, and so then if you do get a refund from your buyer, you can pass that right along to your lead seller as soon as it's approved. So you see there, those are some of the switches. Uh, we didn't cover all of them that, uh, that can be used to customize um, 
how you're receiving leads from this specific buyer or this specific seller, excuse me. Um, the other option you might know is, is if we just come in here and um, you might receive leads on a direct post. So the first thing we looked at was the posting specs uh, for a direct or post. In those cases, you're typically paying on a per lead basis. So you could enter that cost in there to be used in reporting and then also for their vendor logins. So that is going to cover uh, who is sending leads, tracking and segmenting those leads. Uh, next, we want to take a look at where those leads are being sold or who is buying these leads. That is going to our Partners tab. So in this system, partners are the lead buyers themselves. Uh, you can call them anything in your system, buyers, clients, agents, partners. Um, <clears throat> you're going to have a whole list of all of your buyers. You can filter down by uh, custom labels, uh, search fields as well, so you can drill down. And if we go into, excuse me, one client, wrong one. We'll go into test partner here. <clears throat> so here you will see uh, several tabs along the top and the left hand side. These are all related to this one specific company. So again, just like with the lead sellers, there's a tremendous amount of flexibility in setting up each lead buyer on a unique basis. Um, so I'll cover some of the high level ones, for example, the account information. This is going to be where you set what this lead buyer can do. Uh, for example, are they active or not active? Can they change their own status through their login or not? Um, can they add funds directly from their login or not? And then we have refunds. So we have about 150 active clients. They handle refunds about 100 different ways. Uh, so there's a lot of uh, options built in there, whether they can request refunds for both web leads and calls. Uh, how long are you going to look back on refunds? Uh, do you want to automatically approve them or automatically approve bulk refunds? Uh, so for those people that uh, process the refunds like on the 14th of the month for the previous month, you can then uh, receive a CSV file from your client, upload and automatically approve those so you don't have to process them on a one-off basis. Uh, and then one that I personally like is the uh, capping a refund bridge limit. This is especially useful if you're dealing with a lot of smaller buyers rather than um, larger buyers. <clears throat> so in this case, you can cap their refund, say, at 15% over the past 30 days. Uh, and that would prevent them from even requesting more refunds than that. Um, so everybody that sold leads direct to a service provider before is, has sold uh, 100 leads and had 90 of them refunded. This is going to allow you to prevent that from ever becoming an issue. Uh, lastly, I wanted to point out is uh, the sales reps. So when you assign a sales rep to a particular account, they can see it in their login. Uh, it automatically tracks commissions on a gross margin basis so that you can easily run reports. And uh, this sales rep can then touch this uh, account for reorders and uh, quality assurance, things of that nature. So that is going to bring us to the money aspect of things. So the transactions tab is a line by line accounting for this client. Uh, it's going to show every lead that they've received, uh, every refund that was processed. Uh, current balances. You can do manual account operations for credits and charges right here. Um, <clears throat> and then the parameters for uh, this client are handled in the invoicing and billing section. So this is where you can go beyond the standard prepay options essentially. Um, you can uh, set a credit limit either on a specific dollar or no limit allowing them to run negative are usually used when you're doing automated invoicing. Um, but we're also integrated with authorized.net CIM for automated rebilling. So you can rebill on a time basis, for example, every Monday the previous seven days, or on a trigger basis. So bill them $500 every time their account falls below $80. Uh, you can do automated uh, monthly reoccurring charges for directory or subscription-based models. And you can do rev sharings as well. The rev sharing model, you would actually sell the lead at $0 and then allow 
uh, a bulk upload um, to associate a specific revenue per uh, per lead. Uh, I will warn that this doesn't work very well with ping post uh, because you're essentially uh, just uh, replying at zero dollars to uh, to each ping for this buyer. So. If you're going to do rev sharing models, I would recommend it not being in a ping post fashion. Um, you'll see here the uh, invoice manager allows you to automate the invoice process on a weekly or monthly basis. Uh, it will automatically log all of the uh, invoices down here. Um, <clears throat> you can download them, you can email them to your client or yourself. And then when you do receive payment, you can click this make payment button will automatically fund the account as well as mark this status as paid so you can keep up to date with each invoice with each client. Uh, the last billing option would be a straight prepaid option through pushing your uh, payment gateways to the, the partner admin and so we'll cover that uh, a little bit later. Um, so all of that really just sets up the, set, the, the setting here for the lead filter sets page. Uh, so this is the most important part of the system. Uh, these are those business rules that I always refer to that you build specifically for each lead buyer. So up here, you're going to have a list of all of your different lead types, and we're going to go and add an insurance one. So in the insurance filter, again, you are going to then set a price um, for a given set of qualifications. So we really have two options when we're talking about selling leads, especially in ping posts. So you have your static buyers, people that are willing to pay $10 for leads in Illinois, and then you have your dynamic buyers, those buyers that are going to receive a ping from you and dynamically return a bid. So the first one we'll go through is just static buyer. So maybe it's a static Illinois leads only. So this is how much they are willing to pay for that lead. Let's just say it's $10. Uh, we're going to ignore this fake ping post. It's just an internal check that you can run scenarios with. Uh, but it will bring us to the profit margin calculation right here. <clears throat> so there's two options with profit margin, as you see, the fixed and the variable. Uh, and we're just going to cover the fixed on uh, this static buy because their bid's not going to change, so there will be no reason to really do a variable. Uh, so let's just say we want to make $2 per lead. So what happens in terms of the overall ping post process is that uh, your lead seller will ping into your system and you're going to ping all of your buyer's filter sets that Dallas qualifications. And let's just say they ping in an Illinois lead. You can then, the system will then grab this price, $10, uh, as the bid for this buyer carve out $2 of your profit margin. So that's going to return $8 back to the lead seller as your represented bid. So if you wanted a $3 profit margin, then the uh, bid would be dropped down to $7. We'll cover variable uh, when we do dynamic, uh, when we do a dynamic filter set, which we'll cover next. Uh, next, you have uh, uh, accepted lead sources. So this is where you can check and uncheck those sellers that would be able to post leads to this buyer. Uh, next, you have your lead delivery set up. So this is going to be how they are receiving the leads. You can see uh, standard HTML, Excel, PDF, plain text. Uh, we, can do cust we can do SMS text messaging as an optional add-on. And then you will see these specials. So these specials represent custom deliveries to post the lead to your client's lead management system or uh, CRM. Uh, so there's a wizard that allows you to build them or you can submit them to buy. Um, next, we're going to come to uh, another set of decisions. So you have your priority. Uh, this allows you to raise and lower priorities to give certain buyers first crack at leads. Uh, if you're on a best bid basis, this is the very last check that's performed. So if two people both return $10, it will then go to this priority settings. Uh, if they're on the same priority, I'll just round round between the two of them. But if you wanted client A to receive every lead um, that they're eligible for, you could raise 
is a priority. Uh, as I mentioned before, exclusivity, you deliver leads exclusive, non-exclusive, or semi-exclusive through all the through the same lead type. Um, so this would allow you to, for example, override uh, the partners per lead setting in the source and, and only deliver the lead to this buyer and no, no others. Uh, you can then do uh, daily, weekly, and monthly leads. And then uh, a lead scheduler. So uh, this really comes in handy if you're doing calls. Uh, we do have clients, especially uh, some larger uh, buyers that buy on a ping post basis through our system. Uh, we'll use this to get very granular in what their bid is for specific times of day or days of week. So maybe we're willing to pay $15 during the weekdays, but only uh, and then set the um, the schedule accordingly. And you can do that again both on the time of day and day of week. And that's finally going to bring us to any of the custom filters that we have for this lead type. So back at the beginning, we were buying Illinois leads for $10, but maybe we only want people between, uh, you know, 18 and 55. So we can then go and set that parameter or set that uh, filtering range for this buyer. So if a lead comes in that's 60 years old, this filter set will not be checked. Uh, then again, it's an Illinois lead, so we can assign the whole state. Uh, or you can drill down to the zip code. So if you wanted to, for example, include only uh, leads within 30 miles of 60654, we can set that in the insurance. Maybe there's regulations or licensing issues. You can choose to stay in the same state. And then it will automatically populate those 275 zips that were found to be included in this section. You can also use magic strings and both on an include or exclude basis. And then finally, just to show you an example of some other custom fields, the insurance type. Uh, for example, if this is only for life or only for auto. Um, now, this is just an example. That custom field could be anything that you want for your lead type. So once we save this, you'll see that it is a business rule down here. Um, <clears throat> you'll see that we have inbound phone filter sets already set up. The idea is that you can build multiple filter sets in multiple lead types. So maybe this buyer here is willing to pay $10 for auto insurance leads from Illinois, but $20 for health insurance leads. You can set up a separate list of business rules for that. Uh, I'm going to go back in and uh, cover selling leads on a dynamic basis very quickly. So as I mentioned, uh, the other option would be a, a dynamic bidder, somebody that is going to take the PIM dynamically return a bit. So in that case, we are going to set $0 for our lead price here because this is going to be the price that is grabbed if they do not return a bid. So typically, if they are not returning a bid, that means there's something wrong with their server, uh, and this would prevent uh, you from uh, passing through any false bids. Uh, and then you're going to come to our profit margin type. So before we use fixed, simple $2 or $3 profit margin, but this buyer or buyer might uh, reply, sellers might reply $20. So in that case, we can use the pricing matrix to build out uh, the prices which, and the profit margins that we want to get per price. So maybe from zero to $10, I only want to take a 10% profit margin. But from $10 to 25, I want to take a 15. And, and if it's over $25, I want to take a 25% profit. So then this is going to be what's carved out based on the value of the ping uh, that they bid on. And then the rest of these uh, options are essentially the same. Uh, the difference being here would, <clears throat> in order to ping out that, we would have to have a custom delivery in there. Again, either one that you build or that we build uh, so that we can ping and gather that, um, and, and gather that dynamic bid. So one thing that a lot of uh, prospects ask uh, in that custom delivery, uh, we can set uh, floors so that if they reply a, to a bid, 
uh, less than what that floor is, uh, even if they're the best bidder, they would still not receive the lead. Um, and then again, everything else here is the exact same as the other filter set. <clears throat> so again, once we set that up, uh, that is now a list of business rules that when a lead that comes in and meets those parameters, uh, we will then consider the, the bid from that filter set. All right, <clears throat> so that is going to take us to where this all comes together, uh, not surprisingly in the leads tab. So this is going to be a real time view of your incoming leads. So our clients spend a lot of their time in here uh, so they can see what's being processed. Very similar to your partner's page, you can drill down by date range uh, and then filter and drill down into uh, any of the variables surrounding the lead. So for example, you can view the posts only or view only those leads that were pinged in, which would present pings that you did not win uh, or both together. Uh, you can research by the lead seller, the lead buyer, returns, any of the custom fields uh, on the lead type, like state, first name, last name, email, and so on. And when you do, excuse me, when you do filter down, you can then uh, easily export them in a CSV file uh, for further offline analysis. On the page itself, <clears throat> You have your lead ID showing you the details uh, and processing options. So we have uh, manual processing for leads and manual review or reprocessing options either on an individual basis or on a bulk basis up here. Um, we have uh, lead QC. That was that uh, uh, optional add-on check that I had mentioned earlier. We can take a look at a result of that in a minute. Um, we have uh, the lead block. So if the each lead that is submitted, there's a full log. It's going to show every ping that you send out to a buyer, the response they make, the profit margin calculation, and the old winner. <clears throat> um, you can request refunds, schedule follow-up tasks on a per lead basis. That's primarily you for clients that are doing verifications and things of that nature. Um, for people in the auto finance verticals, uh, do car quotes, and possibly one or two other. We also have a call center verification, which allows you to work within the constraints of a ping post environment, um, sell the lead to a particular buyer or dealer, but not deliver it until it's actually verified. Um, all of these tabs in the middle here can be customized by you, uh, but you can see things like cost, source, <laughs> and then uh, on the far right, we have disposition or what happened to the lead. So for example, this lead was sold to test company for $10, it was successfully delivered and there's been no refund requests. Um, you have phone services that uh, allow you then to process those uh, call center verification leads alluded to. Um, you can see here, this lead went unmatched. Um, this lead went unmatched due to a delivery failure. These leads are held in manual review, meaning that um, they need some sort of approval or decline before uh, it can be processed to the buyers. So there's a lot of flexibility in how you deal with each lead, or each lead, and then there's sub-dispositions over here so you can drill down. So for example, in an unmatched fashion, these are going to be leads that you do not have any buyers for. So in a typical lead flow, this would help identify gaps in your data. <clears throat> I'll just briefly show the um, the inbound phone routing. So you'll see it looks very similar to uh, to the web leads, uh, uh, with the exception on the right here, the phone services tab then would allow you to uh, actually listen to the call recordings uh, so that you can ensure uh, quality. Um, the other thing is that you can look at total duration campaigns so that uh, you know exactly where the call's going from and how long they lasted. All right, so that is going to bring us to uh, some reporting options. So in the system, there are several different 
lead types or, or distribution types. So you have your standard real-time delivery, you have inbound calls, you have ping post leads, and then you have aged leads. And each one of those types of leads uh, have their own of about 50 different reports. So in the case of inbound phone, you'll see calls by hour, by source, and so on. And then for ping post, you're going to see a different set of reports. Uh, outgoing pings versus accepted, um, both for lead seller and partners, um, clicks to conversion, uh, profit reports broken down several different ways. So again, there are about 50 of them standard. Uh, it certainly doesn't meet all of our clients' needs, so we do a lot of custom reporting. Uh, it's just a simple matter of identifying the headers that you want pulled into the report. We build it and place it in your system. Uh, and then all of the reports that you have in your system can be made into a timed report. So this would allow you to uh, automate the delivery <clears throat> of any of your reports uh, that covers a certain period. Uh, you can email it or FTP it to yourself uh, on some periodic basis. And then we have magic strings available. So you can, for example, send only the leads received by partner to each partner specifically off that standard report. Uh, so that also works the same for vendors, and then you could also send it to administrators as well. Um, <clears throat> so I've mentioned a couple of times about the different logins that are available. We've been primarily or all in the administrator logins right now. Um, but we can take a look real quick at uh, the buyer logins and the seller logins. So back to the vendor side, uh, these are, again, are your lead sellers. And if we go to <coughs> vendor admin, we can see what the system would look like from your lead seller's point of view. Again, a lot of this is going to depend on the customization that you have. Um, and what permissions that you allow in the uh, in the vendor's login, but uh, they can see a high-level view of their leads by lead type or time. Um, <clears throat> they can view their leads if you allow it. You can determine what fields show up on these uh, on these columns. And some of our clients will just put status and like lead ID in there so they can see whether the lead was matched or unmatched or declined. Um, the host and post manager, again, you can push that to uh, that functionality to your uh, your vendor account uh, so they can build their own form essentially and, and drive those leads directly uh, to your system. And then the web campaigns. So again, these are going to be uh, the offers that <coughs> that uh, we have. So we have several of them in here, all leads, per sold leads. And they can come right here, view the campaign info and all of the creatives about around it as well as generate a click URL uh, directly from their management page so they can build the link based off of their specific source they can populate their own sub ID pub IDs uh, build that click URL to drive traffic to your landing page and then offer We're going to go back into admin and then take a quick look at the lead buyer's login. So again, these are going to be let's go into this one. So we're going into what your lead buyers would see if they logged into their system. If I click on it correctly. All right, so they have a typical dashboard, um, very similar to yours. And then their My Leads tab is very similar to your Leads tab. Um, so one thing you'll note here is for inbound calls, so they can download their call recordings. Um, but then in, in any lead that, uh, <coughs> excuse me, that they receive, they can go in here and uh, make notes on the account for things like email follow-ups, phone calls. Uh, they can change the status and walk them through their process from working leads to close one, close loss. All of them get updated here, and so your buyer can filter down by disposition status, state, any other variables that you allow. 
the rest of their login, they have a transactions tab, again, showing them the line by line uh, accounting of their account. They can request refunds uh, based off of reasons that you allow. They can do that on a one-off basis through here. Uh, the settings tab, a lot of this is going to be dependent on what you allow, whether or not they can turn their account status on and off and deactivate themselves or view their own lead filter sets. Um, then they can add funds, again, if you allow it. So we have several different gateways that I mentioned. You can push that right to their login page. They can come in here and if we just take a PayPal example. You determine these drop down, they can come here, put their PayPal account and prepay for leads. It will automatically get added to their balance. The cherry picker is something that's becoming more popular um, <clears throat> in verticals. Um, this gives you the ability to essentially age out a lead and push partial information to their buyer tab so that they can come and purchase these on a one-off basis. They just add them to their shopping cart <clears throat> and then uh, and can purchase and receive the lead deliveries via their normal, um, their normal delivery method. They can contact you and then there is a that they can schedule tasks and events as well. So that is going to cover uh, the three main uh, login types, the admin, the lead buyers, and the lead sellers. Um, that is going to take us to some bells and whistles. So <clears throat> it is a self-serve platform, meaning that uh, you control, uh, you set up all of your own lead sellers, all of your own lead buyers. Um, we have uh, tools, uh, excuse me, logs here that are available. Um, you can see the last 200 records, failures, um, successes, so that if you want to see exactly what was posted to a lead buyer or whether or not a pixel was fired, you can research those on a lead ID basis. Uh, we have system log available and then lead rejects, which is going to help you with troubleshooting lead sellers. Uh, this will spec out exactly what was missing from each lead post. Uh, and then from an internal, <clears throat> from an internal standpoint, uh, we have a do not call and a bad words list. So both of these, I just want to stress on the do not call list, is not tied in in any state or federal database. Uh, again, this is just internally, uh, it's internally used to prevent leads from being distributed, so you can uh, spam, things of that nature. Um, and we're almost done here, so we're going to be finishing up uh, back where I started in the settings tab. So we do have the API specs, which I mentioned at the beginning. Again, there are about 50 standard ones. Uh, another example of a lot of customization that we do. If you need specific API actions, we can then build it and place it into your system. Um, and then finally uh, is the notification manager. So in here is going to be about, again, 50 different uh, trigger events that you can then determine emails to be sent out. So some of them are administrative based, like new account signups, refund requests, um, uh, unmatched leads, things of that nature. But some of them you may want to use in a marketing capacity. So the new lead matched is one that a lot of our clients use. So in here, again, you can determine to whom this is sent. We're going to send this to the lead. And then on the right of all of them, you have your magic strings that you can use uh, and manipulate to pass the dynamic information. So this one reads, uh, <clears throat> your, uh John Smith, uh, below is a list of your matching partners. And so this code then will dynamically include uh, one or, or all of the matching partners. So if you sold it non-exclusively, they would all appear here. Um, so this is going to create an association between the lead and the people that are contacting them. Uh, but it also gives you the opportunity for yet another cross offer. So this is an HTML editor, uh, maybe you stick a banner just like Amazon. Those people that submitted an inquiry for this lead type are also interested in that lead type. Drive them to another one of your landing pages that has a authority form on it. They complete that. You can pre-pop that information, and so they can submit another lead 
uh, in the related vertical. So that's just an example of uh, a way that you can utilize the forms manager or the notification manager <clears throat> uh, to help uh, grow your business and, and branch off to new verticals. All right, so that is everything that I wanted to get through um, initially on <clears throat> on this demo. Uh, I think now is the time to uh, open this up uh, for any questions. I did see somebody Skype across here. So let's see here. When sending a lead to customer CRM, is there an option to send it to a specific user in the CRM? So we'll take this opportunity just to take a quick look at the custom delivery wizard. <clears throat> Um, so again, these are done on a uh, are specific for your system because fields are different than somebody else's fields. Your posting URL is different, and so on. Uh, the short answer to your question is yes, there is, um, as long as your buyer can <clears throat> can identify a field to put through, like an agent ID field. So you'll see here at new as copies. What we can do here is based Basically, <clears throat> once it is mapped, is we can default hard-coded values. So um, we can do that for, for example, maybe they're they want to pass through, you know, one, two, three as the source to identify the specific agent ID. Um, so you can then hard-code that in, and then you can map each of those values to the appropriate one on a form-by-form -form basis. Um, <clears throat> we do not have the capability of, of, take, of taking an email and parsing that. I do know there are services that have done it. Um, I'm sorry, the, the question was, uh, can we parse emails into the system? Um, so. Uh, I believe there are services, it would have to be done outside of the Bobberdew system prior to the submission. Um, and then obviously it doesn't really work in a, if you're trying to buy a ping basis, but if you had a service, you could parse that information, direct post it in via the lead type box. So you would just set up that parse, first name, last name, and so on. It's probably a good time to take everybody off the mute, just in case uh, somebody wanted to chime in uh, or ask their questions over uh, the, the audio line here instead of typing them. <clears throat> so I answered all the questions on ping post. Pretty impressed with myself. Scott, is there a way that I can get a copy of this webinar? Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to send everybody a copy of the webinar. It'll take us uh, probably the rest of the day to get it online, but we'll send everybody a link so you can reference it um, along with uh, the one on call routing as well. All right, thanks. Sure. Any other questions, guys? We still have a decent number of people on, so I'm happy to, to uh I'm happy to ask them now if uh we can always call. Um again my goal in this demo was to provide you with an overview of the system. Uh not necessarily answer every specific question as it relates to your business. But now that we have this benchmark or framework established, I think we can jump on shorter, more scenario-based demos uh, or screen shares from here out and, and, and dig into how the system would address your, your specific business processes. All right, well, if there's no other questions, I'm going to end this right at one o'clock. Um, the rest of their afternoon, and uh, don't hesitate to contact me uh, anytime. So uh, thank you very much, and I look forward to exploring this with you guys further.